We are running slightly, I think, late. So I try to uh, catch up on time so that we can go to the village, uh, which is, I think, one of the most interesting and important part of the program for the day. Uh, so if I'm exceeding my time, please let me know uh, and I'll get it accordingly. So as introduced, I come from uh, Sitara, Center for Technology Alternatives for Rural Areas, which is an independent academic center within IIT Bombay. So first of all, uh, let me uh, acknowledge and uh, thank the hosts, uh, Dr. Akhile, Dr. Vinod and Dr. Deepak, who have been taking care of us since yesterday uh, for all the arrangements and for this invitation uh, to discuss about Sitara, the experience and Sitara journey in this field of technology and development which I will talk about. Of course, I will acknowledge uh, my research collaborators, colleagues at Sitara and all of you uh, who have gathered here to listen to this. Uh, but we started our academic programs only since 2007. So this is a snapshot view of the brief journey of Sitara. So on the right side you see uh, the photo of our first head, uh, Professor Amin Dhatil, who was a professor in uh, some of these activities and some basic uh, lab infrastructure workshop was initiated around that time. And then uh, although uh, there was an effort made to begin an academic program, it took a long time for I Bombay even to accept and destiny for the uh, agreement. So I joined Siddhartha in 2006 as the first faculty appointment in Siddhartha. So till then we did not have faculty appointments, there were only research scientist positions. And then in 2007, we could uh, convince the institute and we could start the first interdisciplinary program in Sitara that is called Intech in Technology and Development, which I talk about uh, in a few minutes. And then over the period of time, the program has grown, uh, uh, it has stabilized, it has grown, and then uh, we have been also able to get some fellowships to add to the existing pool of students, which is supported by the Institute of Education earlier in HRD. And then uh, Newer initiative has started in, we, have, we are regularly getting some international uh, visitors or interns who wants to, they want to do some kind of field work or field assessment and we have been uh, happily hosting them in those initiatives as well. And recently we have started another master's program called MDP which I will uh, talk about later. So just to give an idea about Sitara, so, uh, so all of you know IITs and NITs, these are premium institutes where technology research happens and it is mostly <coughs> from an ivory tower I would say. So uh, most of the research happens in the lab. But the distinguishing feature of centre like Sitara is basically uh, the interdisciplinarity in the approach. We believe that no problem is only a mechanical, chemical or electrical engineering problem. And the problem is a problem and we have to find a solution. So whoever needs to join hands, whatever expertise needs to be gathered that we have to do and then one of the important aspects of understanding the problem and then tackling the problem is first of all retaining need assessment and problem definition and in that interacting with the stakeholders and especially in case of rural areas it may be the NGOs which are working on the ground, it may be villagers, it may be gap and child. So that part is very critical. So as Professor Dhatya, our founding head used to say we try to celebrate development through technology. So technology is only used as a mean. Uh, technology is not an end. Okay, so it is not like we have to enforce technology. So maybe some of the problems may not need technological intervention. So that assessment or that judgment is also very critical. Because we always see that some of the problems in the society are actually generated because of wrong way of implementing technology. So, so we have to be very careful, although we are from institutes of technology, we have to see what role technology can play in this whole societal development. So that is very important. So our focus has been on the earlier time it was mainly uh, looking at the regional needs and local resources and that continues to be there. And a lot of emphasis on experiential learning. So we have to go to the field, we encourage our students also to do that very much. So this is the kind of a backdrop of the context of the country today. So we are kind of following the paradigm of development, which is kind of uh, uh, characterized by what is accepted definition of development globally. Okay, so typically it is synonymous with economic growth, but is it all that we want to achieve? Because currently we see industrialization, urbanization and consumption. So 
these are the three mantras on which our growth paradigm is dependent on. And what it essentially is leading to is only unidirectional flow of resources. So we know that we extract resources from nature, we manufacture things, we advertise and sell them, and we encourage the consumers to consume. And then there is an end of life, and then we have to deal with huge piles of waste. So that is what now it is very fashionable. They started talking about circular economy. We want to have more sustainability in all these consumption approaches. But what it has led, especially in the last few decades, is a disrupting of percent, seven percent, ten percent. We want to become five trillion economy. But the other aspect of that, or other face of that, is that there is an increasing disparity between what we call as India, which mostly lives in cities and metros, and Bharat, which lives in the village. So this gap is widening day by day. See, and then only when we go to the villages, we realize how difficult the situation is. Where the villages are dying, people are mostly migrating in the off agricultural season to nearby urban areas, and then there is no way that we can continue in a society like this where the cities are overburdened. Whatever amount of infrastructure that you create, it is not going to be enough for the city also because there is constant influx. I mean, Mumbai city is a prime example. I mean, every day trains of people are added added in the city, and then. None of the planning of any kind of facilities is going to be enough unless we have a rural area self-sufficient and people can continue to live there. So, in all this backdrop, we have to critically look at what is the role of technology. So, is technology part of solution or part of problem? So, we believe that technology solves all the problems. That is what typically technocrats and researchers in technology feel believe that. But then we have to consciously look at that. What are the externalities of technology? We have to understand them very clearly, and that's why there is an urgent need to look at and work on the interface between technology and development. Okay? Because currently it is kind of a complete bifurcation. Those who are working in the field of technology, technocrats, they don't understand what are the ground realities and what are the needs. And those who are working in the development sector. They often don't know what technology can offer. Either they feel that technology will solve all the problems, or they don't know anything about the capability of technology. So we have to bridge this gap and work on this interface. And that's why we offer this specialization called technology and development. And we do a lot of emphasis on that and which connects these two. So this intake specialization that we are offering it is not technology development. So technology development, all the departments are doing. But what we are trying to do is connect technology with development, which is a very wider concept. I and mean, there are so many definitions of what is development, and each of us may have our own notion of what is development. Now we go back to talk about sustainable development, not just development. But one way to look at it is, it is basically a process where where we try to encourage more of a, a freedom to all the individuals. And secondly, it widens the choices. People have in terms of where they want to live. So typically, there is a drastic difference between what we see is uh, life in the urban areas and rural areas. So in the urban areas, we have plenty of choices in terms of how we want to travel, what we want to eat, what we want to wear. When we go to rural areas, there is no such choice. I mean, you have probably no roads or no transportation, no public transport, and no water supply. So there is very limited kind of uh, avenues that are available. So The whole process of development essentially triggers having a wider menu of choices for people, which also enters empowerment and having more freedom. So, what we are trying to do is connect these technology with development to this program, where we hope that we can train uh, young engineers and technocrats to work on this interface between technology and development to cover some of the course. Uh, but one of the emphasis is given, as I said, in terms of field exposure and field work. So every theoretical course that we have, it has an associated field with it. So if we are teaching water resources, then there is a visit to the area where some judging condition or some scheme is being implemented. How it is designed, how it is, what are the issues, what are the stakeholders' perspective in terms of, and similarly energy, agriculture. So every course has a field with it. So that is one of the important. Part of the integral part of the uh, coursework, and then this is the only MTech program which emphasizes that our students spend nine weeks in a village, and I'll talk about that uh, more uh, next. And then all our uh, dissertation or MTech thesis are also field oriented. Uh, this is the kind of a course structure at a glance that I can say uh, there is uh, uh, there are these four types of courses that we have included uh, in terms of the perspective courses, sectoral courses. I will explain what I mean by that. So the core courses are basically laying the foundation of this program, and then the field exposure is basically very important to understand the ground reality. So uh, then they also 
some electrons because everyone has their background with some pathway that they want to pursue, so to build in some flexibility, we have some electrons as well, and then they finally do independent uh, project work as well. So, just to give examples of four buckets that I have talked about perspective, skill courses, and knowledge courses. So, we have a course, for example, on developing theory. What is exactly, how do we define development? And there have been various intellectual works in terms of to define development. Now we always talk about the SDGs, but earlier it was MDGs, and there have been some legal in terms of how to define development as such. Now there are also people who say, rather than that, we should talk about happiness index, rather than development index. Okay, SDGs are also the popular concept. So there have been a lot of theories evolving in this, so we have to understand what development means when you are entering into the field of development professionals. And then, what is the linkage between technology, society, and development? So there is a dedicated course. Uh, which was also earlier, in the earlier author, it was for appropriate technology, but over the period of time, the expanse has been uh, made to, and we have transformed the course, which talks about more in terms of linkages between technology, society, and development. And then public policy and governance. This should also understand the policy aspects and government, the governance issues in the daily with technology and uh, development. So, this is for mastering development practice. Uh, as I said, it is uh, currently. Uh, open to those who have a degree, four year degree in engineering, technology, planning, or architecture. And then the critical part is they have a field experience of at least two years. So, apart from that, we also uh, anchor the root activities at uh, IIT Bombay, as it was mentioned earlier. So, these are in <coughs> seven or eight different IITs, these uh, cells are there, and IIT Bombay has been engaged since 2010 uh, in this initiative. Uh, and then these are some of the examples of some other outreach kind of activities we have uh, engaged Of course, uh, Center like I, uh, Sitara is very critical in IIT Bombay. Mr. Uh, uh, Abhijit was involved in, uh, recently we had an institute wide review of various departments and centers. So, we are critical in the sense whenever there is a question from the parliament, what is IIT doing for the society? So, then all those questions are sent to only one center, that is Sitara. So, uh, although there are 750 faculty members, only 10 of us are supposed to answer that what IIT is doing for society. <laughs> so, it is more or less kind of a CSR unit of uh, IIT Bombay, but we believe that we are not just a uh, service organization, we are an academic program and we do uh, uh, get good students in our PhD and MBA program as well. And then, but we. Make so, sorry to interrupt you. So, 11.30 we are in the yes, yes, So, yes, yes, just last. Class, 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 yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, we also encourage activities that some of our alumni have taken up initiatives mostly in the agricultural agro processing uh, that kind of a space. And just to conclude, I would say there is a need to work on the interface of technology and development. Uh, and this is very much relevant to the three types of activities, not just the uh, awareness that you have to work on, but how to do the intervention that is also very important. And then opportunities, there are ample opportunities in the academic program. In the, even the conventional courses that we are teaching in mechanical or civil engineering, we can try to bring in this aspect how the students can do some hands on activity and get engaged with society. And the new education policy uh, can foster this uh, further. Uh, and then uh, working with people, trying to understand the needs is very important. So, with that, I will conclude. So, thank you so much. Sorry, I will take time. and give to some young faculty who is interested in these uh, things and want to start uh, something in their own institute. And, and we can't wait for, uh, you know, for a group, group to settle after 15 years or 35 years. We want to do something immediately. And one of us, you know, Sitara has not focused itself in this direction. And maybe IIT Nambas has done something which we'll see next time. And maybe towards the end of the uh, workshop, we should see how we can even tap the uh, undergrads. I mean, this may be a simple thing of how we can motivate them. And advanced courses will be the type that you have developed, obviously, once more faculty get involved, that also happen. I hope uh, we will uh, yeah. generate some ideas. Very yeah. valid point, and we are, we are working. Educate for these courses, this <coughs> for placement. So if, if you have done this course, then we will take you, otherwise we will not take you. So you have given very good data 
all are placed hundred percent placement. Actually, the statistics is IIT Bombay has hundred percent placement. So whatever post there, that is Yahoo, Google, everything you will come and do this. So how many companies has visited only for this course? If you have a degree in this course, then what you will get. So over the years, what I have uh, mentioned that we are also not happy that our students go to dot coms. Frankly speaking, after two years of training in this, if we lose them to finance and uh, some other sectors like Shami dot com, Yahoo dot com, that is not their actually trained for. Uh, but then their overall skill set makes them eligible to appear for these. But then what we have started from the last few years that before the formal placement happens. We hold one event called Development Dialogue. So where we invite all the potential employers in the social sector. So they are both CSRs of various companies and the NGOs which are willing to hire students from our. So every year we hold it in October. So it is before the placement. And then if they and then all the students present their background and work and the companies present their profiles. And if there is any kind of a matchmaking that is happening, then they come formally through our placements. And then that is the mode that we are encouraging and some of our students have got placed through that mode also. But then currently as you point, rightly said, many of these companies are not specifically coming from Sitara, except few agencies like Bio for example or CEW. So there are some think tanks and some of these large organizations which come for Sitara students only. But then many of these companies don't mind looking at Sitara students, especially uh, they are very restrictive about other uh, disciplines and their specialization, but Sitara they are slightly more open because they understand that the Sitara students have that ground experience which is very very valuable these days. Uh, they have those insights and they are also doing some courses in data analysis which are again catching up with fast. So that helps them to get good places. We have to force them to go and contribute to the society and once you get the Training certificate. You have uh, contributed to the society, then only we will allow you to placement. Then they will contribute better. Yeah, it will require major paradigm shift. But we keep on warning our students when they go to the field for two months that they are not there to solve any problem. So they are going as students to understand. Okay, so that approach is very, very critical. We we feel that, I mean, uh, we are from the Institute of Technology, we can go and give gyan to anybody and we can solve their problem, but that is the other way out. We have to go and understand and learn from them. So, so it is very, very unreasonable to say that, okay, so we can just send all our students for two months in the village and they will uh, solve all the problems of the village. So that is, I think, it will require a lot of uh, training, a lot of uh, preparation for them to go to the field uh, before they are sent to field like that. So, uh, I would say that uh, that kind of approach may not be uh, working well uh, because uh, this humility and approach is very, very important. How you go to the field and try to learn from people rather than uh, having this kind of a very arrogant approach that uh, I am coming from IIT, I know everything and then I will solve the problem. So, that is very, very uh, uh, non-working approach, I would say. And they identify some problems. And they will come back and, for example, they have some solution strategy for them. Some of the problems are very common in all the other villages as well. So it's like uh, some uh, identified problem and solution are parallelly implemented in other villages also, is it? Or second uh, thing is like uh, some villages have different problems. So my uh, thing I want to ask like certain strategies are problems are common in other villages. So the students like other students they will go for their or some faculty members try to see that other villages have the same problem, we can implement that strategy there. Right. So yeah, sometimes it is possible because there are issues which are similar across uh, different domains or in a cluster of villages it can be replicated. So many times whatever study that they do in the village, it helps the local agency either to form a funding proposal to various agencies uh, to implement the project. Sometimes their work is in the domain of uh, kind of a verification of the impact of what has been the intervention that the NGO is doing, how it has impacted, because it is like a third party which is coming and looking at it. So the work that they do is of various kinds, but it, it has helped the local agency in variety of ways, both to understand how relevant their interventions are, and then how they can design new interventions, understanding the local resources and local aspirations, 
So sometimes it is yes, that is the case that we can replicate it in different areas. But many times it is the experience that the every village and every context is very very unique. Uh, there are local factors which are more important than very general factors. So some local intervention is has to be designed. 